the first project I really had was to, see I should be on the side talking to you. The first project I had was um, researching the Anacostia River because the project, the program, the issue was environmental groups were starting to put effort and energy around the river, but communities, because the trash was the issue, so even if you did a pickup, unless you Not got enough, to the root right? of why people were tra it, uh, littering, we never got there. So I did all kinds of programming with different organizations, Anacostia Watershed Society, Kennel with Aquatic Gardens, but it was based on the fact that I learned the history of this river and was so passionate about it because I felt like it was like it had suffered an injustice. Like it gave so much to the building of, of, of DC in terms of being a, a main waterway for probably the con you know the, the um, granite and everything that the, the, the city was built on. But then after they finished using it, they went to the other side, not to mention what they did to the people on the land. Uh, the Nakach Tank Indians? Keep walking, okay. The Nakach Tank Indians? Oh yes. my gosh. Right. They, they turned the Potomacs against, I mean, it was the same ideal of colonialism, but they don't, you know, they don't talk about that. It just starts as the nation's river, and they don't even realize what that really meant mm -hmm. as the nation's river. Like this ecosystem, the fact that things still thrive here just makes me go, yes. And yeah, and, and they're not only thriving, I mean, communities have been here, growing families. Yes. Growing but movies. they haven't been able to swim in the river. Like yes. that's messed up. That's really messed up. I was talking to somebody yesterday. They were like, yeah, we still can't eat the fish and we still can't swim in the river. Um, but we can go to the baseball game. Right. And we can go on a boat with some people that, mm -hmm. you know, don't really connect with our lives. Identify the women that Look they feel have been making mm -hmm. these changes. Mm -hmm. Start. Okay. And so, tell me more about your the, the project you're doing now. That's, I saw the, the video that's on yeah. online, but I want to hear more about it. Well, in, um, so when I moved away to New York, um, while I was working for the New York Restoration Project, Dr. Marion Krasny of Cornell University reached out to me. Um, there was this grant that come, came out every five, four or five years called the National Environmental Education Training Program Grant. Mm -hmm. And it's $10 million to build capacity in the field of environmental education. She wanted Cornell University to go after that money and she wanted to hire me to be one of four people that actually helped build the vision for that because she knew that there was going to take an element of that that involved addressing issues around inclusion, urban communities, like all the things that spoke to the work that I did because I met her up front and said, hey, listen, just so you know what I'm about, because yeah. I'm not going to be apologetic about it down the line, I'm not going to be quiet, you're, you're bringing me on board because I bring this perspective. So, and, and, she, and the beautiful thing about it is even though she's academic and she has a PhD and all these things, she is so down about it. <laughs> it's such a, a, a breath Relief. of fresh air. Oh. Yeah, because you know, even, when, even though it's male dominated, you got females that I think maybe as a result of the male dominated way that you feel like you have to operate, women have just turned cold to the real mission of, of nurturing. And so there's, you know, the field of environmental education, I don't think was really, for me at least in my 20s and my years being an environmental educator, it never embraced those things that I felt that made us really successful, which were the relationships with the communities. The, all they cared about was the day, snap the picture, count the trash, Mm -hmm. Look at the frog, but they weren't thinking about those kids and the trauma, the, the effects of the trauma in their neighborhood. So, right. I was able in the, and through this grant. they were part or not part of the whole. Right, which, which most times they would they would judge them by the grades that they got, which is already kind of off because just because this kid is low performance, most of the kids I worked with, which have been primarily, I don't want to say at risk, but just you know, kids from low income neighborhoods, have always loved science. Yeah. Their behaviors were off because of what was going on in their neighborhood, mm -hmm. the lack of you know, uh, adult leadership and things of that nature. Right. So all that to say, fast forward, in the opportunity to come and help with uh, evolve practices in the field of environmental education that build capacity around those kind of things, I've evolved this practice called Community EE. I'm evolving it now. It's basically started as guidelines where I just went out and interviewed a whole bunch of communities across the United States um, asking them, what are the issues that make your neighborhood stressed? But I invited environmental people as well and said, you know, what are the, who are the communities you can't, that are hard to reach for you? What is environmental education? What is community? And started having these conversations, gathered all these adjectives and verbs <laughs> Right. and put them together into these guidelines that says, hey, listen, if you want to go, which community is basically, if you want to go into a community with an environmental outcome, you have to do it through the lens of what matters to the community. Right. You're talking about employment, neighborhood economics, crime, food, justice in general, water, air, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. If you really want to do your work, think about it through the lens and engage those people in a way that you are partners, not right. where I'm coming in to save you. It happens so much now that it's just people are numb to it and environmental yeah. groups get kind of a bad rap because they, it's not about them being white. <laughs> it's about them just not having the um, perspective because they haven't walked 
sort of the plight of most people in low-income communities. Right. However, it doesn't mean that you can't do the work. Okay. It just means you have to open yourself up and realize you're not the only learner at the table. You, you need to learn. You're not the teacher all the time. So what is your, what do you see your, your journey from here on, you know? Well, I'm involved in this wheel. It's going to be an online resource that people come into and as they fill out these questions around what they care about and what they want to try to do, like, it's going to look like a wheel ultimately. Right now it's an app and it's like a dating site almost mm -hmm. where I'm trying to match community people with environmental folks. So when you come in and answer these questions, which are kind of fun looking, but they're asking you, what do you care about? What are you willing to try? So they'll give you examples of like, you could plant trees in honor of people who have died if you want to plant trees in your neighborhood and crime is what you care about. Right. So making those kind of connections, Ooh. but then it also asks you who you know. So it takes your social capital survey because social capital is where we as communities could That's excel and totally flip it over, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But we got to get together and realize. So, and in going to these different cities and working in DC, I've always realized that that stress was there and that was the root of why the families never performed to what these environmental groups expected. So they always remained hard to reach. Mm -hmm. And it's just like at this point in time where we're getting so close to the edge on water, we don't even realize how close our water all challenges are. Now. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. We're getting so close. I think that there's just a natural enlightenment that I believe is happening. And I, I, I hope that this tool will be a part of that to help people meet each other, know what to say, translate their feelings into what they're saying. And the main audience I'm, I'm focusing on right now in terms of piloting this to see, so I can one, put in best practices to suggest to people, but also just test out is the reentry population. Right. Because um, mass incarceration is becoming a really big issue because it's just so obvious and, and the writing's been on the wall for so long and it connects directly to a lot of the things that AL are, it, that too, but it, 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 they're the reason these neighborhoods are like this. We need our men at home. Absolutely. <laughs> that's community, that's what it's about. So, oh, so I was, I could just start anywhere. So I started working with the Earth Conservation Corps back in 1996, I think it was. And they, they didn't have any of that. The pump house was there, but it was, yeah, they had, the pump house was there, but it was jacked. But they had a trailer. That's what they worked out of. And this was like one of their first cores, I think if not, that's probably around for the first or second core. And um, girl, the kids he was bringing in were just like, straight, real kids. Mm -hmm. And I was hired to teach them environmental education. And during one of our sessions, the kid was like, oh, F about da 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 da. And it wasn't at me. It was legitimate statements. And I thought it shook me in a very good way, though, because it made me go. Uh, immediately, I changed the subject to what they wanted to go into, but not in a way that they bullied it. But I went, I pulled out where their thoughts were coming from and what do you care about? You know what I mean? Because it was. It was uh, unrealistic for me to go in there and think that I was going to put my environmental values on them, which weren't really mine, but I was an environmental educator and that's what I thought I was supposed to be doing. So what's, what's going on on the Anacostia now, like this side of the river now? So we see all of this, like yeah. the backdrop of all of this, like you got this national parks, people canoe in, like that canoe joint, yeah, large parks. It, so came, at price, yeah. it came at a price though, it came at a price. I mean, when I was working in the 90s on the river, they were just starting the Anacostia waterfront corporation or somebody but they go out and do these listening sessions and what do you want and we're going to build around what you care about and da 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 and use people like me and Brenda Richardson to bring our networks in and you know I think because gentrification happens everywhere there's like a model and you know when it's happening and I guess we just at that time were still living the reality of it that we weren't projecting or seeing even a place in any of this so this wasn't a surprise so when I went away for six years I came back I kind of I kind of have not been active in the Anacostia community as, as much as I was you know, prior to leaving. And coming back, I do see some things, the needle has moved forward on some things, but just the, the rate of gentrification that's happened here is just crazy for me to see certain cultures and certain communities. And unfortunately, you know, in some cases people have been pushed out and I don't think that necessarily the cultures around those people are picking up. And it's just two separate things going on in the same neighborhood, which is not community. Right. So. I, the the river-wise, I think there's been a lot of uh, movement around um, policy to make the river clean, and it's actually great to see so many people active in using the river. But it still bothers me because the river is still dirty. It's still unswimmable, unfishable, like, and a lot of that has to do with regulations that are allowed in the river. So if we really wanted to do something, I feel like we, right. we really could. But when you got people not holding people accountable, you know, we still 
have to struggle with issues around water quality. And not because of the river, but the same things that go on in the neighborhood, the, the crime, the pollution in the neighborhoods. But again, I, I do feel hopeful. So I, do, you see, um, do you see people looking towards the river now? You know, have they always looked towards the river, the communities here? Well, I think they've always come to Anacostia Park. They've always used the river. They, they didn't get on the river, right. but they came down here and fished hosted their family reunions in this park. This park has been like essential to the, the, at least the environmental culture or the nature culture of these neighborhoods. Fort DuPont is pretty awesome too. Like that's the other ironic thing. For Southeast to be at some one time such a crazy place, it always had beautiful things and it was actually fertile soil. Potomac is um, Piedmont Plateau. That soil are, is, uh, it's not as, it's rocky. This is um, coastal plain. So the soil is fertile. And so when the Native Americans came here, when, when um, John Smith first came up here and saw this area, he was like, oh my God, this place is popping. And so this is where everything kind of started. Yeah. And that's what made this area rich was that th those Native Americans over there didn't have this. So they actually had a point of trade. Whereas once it became about land ownership and just overproduction of, of crops, like they saw how fertile the soil was and thought, oh, if you can do this with this in my land, let's cut all these trees down and do 10 times this crop. But in cutting the trees down, they, they caused erosion into the river. And so the river started filling up. And it wasn't until the Navy hosted something and they tried to turn around this big ship and it got stuck that they ever really put any effort into it. They had soldiers down here dying of malaria in, at the Navy yard, but they still didn't do anything about it. But once they looked stupid because the river had so much sediment in it that this this one time ships, ocean going ships went up and down here, they got to a point where it couldn't even turn around. Mm -hmm. That's when the Army Corps of Engineers were called in and they started trying. But even then, they, they didn't do it right. But mm -hmm. I didn't mean to turn this into that. <laughs> <laughs> there's still a lot of work. I'm saying that to say that there's still a lot of work. You can't throw us little crumbs because they benefit. Look at that. Yeah. Sure, I bet you will throw us some crumbs now. Look what you got. Right. I we'll mean, there's. See you about that. Yeah, right. well, they're not done yet. People want the best for each other, I think, ideally. You know, we get damaged because things happen to us. And then we then do those things to other people and start this cycle of just indigestion, of emotional indigestion, <laughs> where you never really get a chance to work through your issues and come full circle and come back to the middle. And when we're not at the middle, we don't have that balance. Even as kids, each of us has a, a body and a connection to the universe. And so younger kids are supposed to have older people around them to help teach them and protect them and feed them and model for them. And when you don't have that, what do you expect to happen? They're modeling what they see on TV. And also, I'm saying I like to say, all of us have, leadership is when we're all in union and community. Like I could be a leader per se. I'm, I'm actually, there's a leadership called servant leadership. Yeah. I feel like I'm a servant leader because I don't really, I don't really care about any of the exterior of how it looks or what people think about it. Mm -hmm. All I care is that I have it to give. Mm -hmm. And so in the case of communities, modeling, I, my, being a person of color, and that's a woman, and they see me in these meetings, running these meetings, or they see me on these teams, or they see me, or they keep seeing us, and now that I have that platform, guess who I'm trying to put on, on blast? People of color, mm -hmm. through everything I do. And you know, I get some pushback from some folks, but you can't sit down and tell me that that's not needed and necessary and yeah, essential if you really want this movement to be for all.